بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد الله على الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف We start a new chapter about different types of Al-Adillat Al-Muhraza Taqseem Al-Bahth Fi Al-Adillat Al-Muhraza According to Ayatollah Saad, he says when Faqih wants to use references or evidence to establish what is the ruling of God sometimes this dalil which is there for establishing hukm is qat'i is decisive and sometimes it is not decisive means sometimes it produces certainty about the result sometimes we are not certain but still it can be a valid evidence ya'tamidu al-faqih fi amaliyat al-istinbat ala anasir mushtaraka tusamma bil adillat al-muhraza kama taqaddam the jurist in the operation in the exercise in the process of istinbat which is drawing rulings from the sources ya'tamidu uh, ala relies on common elements anasara mushtaraka on common elements which are called al adilla al muhraza those uh, References those uh, reasons which are muhraza. Muhraza, literally, as we said before, means to secure, to protect, but here means to establish what is hukm waqi. Because in istinbat, you want to understand hukm waqi. If you cannot understand hukm waqi, then you go for hukm wahiri and usul amaliyah. An answer means elements. If you remember when we were talking about usul al fiqh we said usul al fiqh is the science that deals with common elements in the process of istinba so faqih relies in the exercise or in the operation of istinba on some common elements which are called adilliyah muhraza wahiyah these adilliyah muhraza imma adillatun qat'iyah Either they are decisive, which means the ma'na annaha to addi ilal qat'i bil hawk. They lead to certainty about the ruling. Fatakun hujjatan ala asas hujjiyat al qat'i natij anha. So they are. Hujjah, they are valid proof. Why? Because certainty is Hujjah. So, because of the validity of certainty which originates from them, which comes as a result, they are Hujjah. If someone says, why you follow this Adli Muhraza? You say, because it has produced Yaqeen. And no one can question Yaqeen. وَإِمَّا أَدِلَّةٌ ظَنِّيَّةٌ Or they are not decisive. They don't produce certainty. They are ظَنِّي. Means they produce more than 50% but not 100%. Yeah? We call it a ظَن suspicion or a speculation. وَيَقُومُ دَلِيلٌ قَطْعِيٌ عَلَى حُجِّيَّتِهَا شَرْعًا So, the reason we follow them is not because they produce yaqeen, but because we have 
certainty that they are hujjah. We have dalil qat'i. We have decisive proof for their validity. Like what? Kama idha alimna bi anna al-mawla amara bittiba'aha. Like when Mawla commands us to follow it. Like khabar wahid. Is khabar wahid leading to yaqeen? No. But if Mawla says that khabar wahid is valid, you can rely on it, then it becomes hujjah for us. So, we are 100% sure that it is hujjah. But we are not 100% sure about the contents of that khabar wahid, about the result of that khabar wahid. Okay? So we have dalil qat'i for its validity, but we don't have yaqeen about what that khabar wahid is teaching us. Okay? So it is dalil dhanni, means it is leading to dhan, not to yaqeen, although itself is based on yaqeen. We are so if someone says, why you are following something which is not leading to yaqeen? We say, we have yaqeen that this is hujjah. We have yaqeen that we can follow this. We don't take risk. Khabar wahid is certainly hujjah. Or for example, salam Or for example, zahir al-Quran is certainly hujjah if we believe in its validity. Or for example, taqlid is certainly hujjah. Although we are not sure about what? About the meaning or the content. Kama iza alimna bi anna al mawla amara bittiba'iha. Like when we are sure that mawla has commanded to follow that dalil al-anni, fa takunu hujjatan bi mujib al jal al shari. So it becomes hujjah according to what? According to Ja'al Shari. So there is a religious uh, authorization. Yeah, there is religious authorization. muhriz fil kana qat'iyan awla yan qasimu ila qisman. Dalil muhriz, whether it is certain or decisive or not, can be divided into two. So one classification was to say Ad-Dalil al-Muhrez Emma Qat'iyun aw Dhanniyun. There is another classification. Whether it is Qat'i or Dhanni, we can divide it into Ash-Shari wal Aqli. Because it is either received from religious texts, religious sources, or it is taken from Aql. Because for us, Aql also is Hujjah. So, Ad-Dalil al-Muhrizu fil-Fiqh Sawa'un kana qat'iyan aw la Yanqasimu ila qismin Whatever is Dalil al-Muhriz in Fiqh Whether it is qat'i or not It is qat'i or dhani Is divided to Al-Awwal ad-Dalil al-Shari Religious reason or religious reference وَنَعْنِي بِهِ كُلَّ مَا يَصْدُرُ مِنَ الشَّارِعِ مِمَّا لَهُ دَلَالَةٌ عَلَى الْحُوبِ And we mean by this everything which comes from شَارِعِ شَارِعِ means the lawmaker, legislator here. We are on page 193. You must have Yes. No, you must have it because it was given to the same time. You have it? Okay. <coughs> so Ad-Dalil al-Shari And we mean by Dalil al-Shari Kullama yasduru minash-shari' 
anything <coughs> which is coming from Shari. Shari means lawmaker, means first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then under him the Prophet and Father. Yasturu means it is issued from, it's coming from, from Sudur. Sadara Yasturu. So every Dalil which is coming, which is originating from Shari. Mimma lahu dalalatun al Because sometimes we have something uh, said by Allah which is about aqa'ir, which is about akhlaq. But we mean those things which come from Allah that are about fiqhi, legal issues. Okay, we mean by dalil here. Kullama yasturu min al mimma lahu dalalatun al al which has uh, indication about hook. Kalam Allah Subhanah, or Kalam Al Masum, like the word of God, the word of Masum, when they talk about hook, about practical rules. We have also Ad Dalil Al Aqli. وَنَعْنِي بِهَا بِهِ الْقَضَايَ الَّتِي يُدْرِكُهَا الْعَقْلِ And we mean by this, those propositions which are understood by aql. وَيُمْكِنُ أَنْ يُسْتَنْبَتَ مِنْهَا حُكْمٌ شَرْئِي Of course, there are many things that can be understood by aql in mathematics, in philosophy. But we mean those things which can be understood by aql and can be a source for understanding Religious ruling, yumkinu and yustan bata minha means it can be a source from which you do a standbat of hukm shari. You draw religious ruling out of it. Kal qadiyat al aqliya al qaila bi an ijab shayin yastalzmu ijab muqaddimati. Like the intellectual proposition which says when something is wajib. It's prerequisite, prerequisite are also wajib. Who tells you to get visa for Hajj? Who gets you, tells you to book your flight, to do vaccination, to apply for visa? We don't have these things in the text. But we know when something is wajib, you have to bring its prerequisites. Okay? So, either it is shari or agli. Shari by itself is divided into lafzi wa ghayr al lafzi. So, ad dalil al shari imma lafziyon aw ghayr al lafzi. Lafzi like what? Like Quran, like hadith. Ghayr al lafzi means it's not linguistic, it is not verbal. Like taqrir al ma'soom. When something is done in the presence of ma'soom and ma'soom has not objected, it means that it was okay. So, this does not have verbal expression. Taqrir is not verbal. If you remember in previous books on usul, we had this idea. Like, for example, qarine can be lafzi or lobbi. Or dalil can be lafzi or lobbi. And when it is lafzi, you can have asalatul umum, asalatul itlaq. But when it is lobbi, you have to just go by the minimum. Yeah? Because it has no lesson, it has no uh, indication, verbal indication that you can say. It's uh, to be arm unless it is proved otherwise, or it is mutlaq unless it is proved otherwise. Al qismu al awwal yan qasmu bidawrahi ila nawain. The first type means dalil al shari by itself is divided into two. Ahaduhuma ad dalil al shari al lafzi. Ad dalil al shari al lafzi. Verbal religious. Reference or so, that be reason for example or evidence. 
وهو کلام المعصوم This is the word of معصوم شتابا او سنتا It can be from Quran which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it can be sunnah like sayings of the Prophet والآخر الدليل الشرعي غير اللفظي non-linguistic non-verbal وَيَتَمَثَّلُ فِي فِعْلِ الْمَعْصُومِ Not the word of ma'soom, the act of ma'soom. سَوَاءٌ كَانَ تَصَرُّفًا مُسْتَقِلًا Sometimes someone says, I saw Rasulullah made wuzu in this way. Okay? Because you remember, sunnah is قول, فعل, تغرير. فعل المعصوم is also قطل. But when he says Rasulullah did, uh, for example, his wuzu in this way, we cannot realize it was wajib or mustahab. But if Rasulullah says, do wuzu like this, it has zuhur fel wuzu. You understand the difference? الدليل الشرعي غير اللفظي ويتمثل في فعل المعصوم and this is embodied in the act of infallible سواء كان تصرفا مستقلا either it is an independent act معصوم has done something or no someone has done something in his presence and he has not objected أو موقفا امضائيا تجاه سلوك معين Oh, he has adopted a position of endorsement. Emblem is what? To endorse. With respect to certain conduct, sulukan mu'ayyan, certain conduct, someone has done something, ma'asum has not objected, has somehow endorsed it. Wa huwa alladhi yusamma بالتقرير and this is what is called تقرير the third type of sunnah والبحث في هذا القسم okay in this part we have when we are talking about دليل شرعي we have three types of discussions whenever it is about دليل شرعي first to clarify, to establish what is the dalala. For example, it's a hadith. What is this hadith saying? And <clears throat> the other thing is, is this hadith which is saying this, hujjah or not? Okay, so for example, is zuhur hujjah or not? But, and then what is the zuhur of this hadith? You cannot uh, replace these two discussions. You have to establish that it's hujjah. You have to establish now that it is hujjah. What does it indicate? And third, you have to establish the sukra. What does sukra mean? The minor pro uh, term, minor proposition. means something that you apply the ruling. For example, there is a hadith which says... Uh, Blood of human being is not just. You establish that this is a correct hadith, authentic hadith. You establish what is the dalala, but also you have to establish that there is blood here. Okay? So that the rule can be applied. Al bahthu fi hadha al qism bi kila nu'ai. Discussion in this part. Which part? About Dalil Shari. Bikila Nuai in its two types, whether it is Lafdi or Gayr Lafdi. Taratan Yaka'u fi Tahdid Dalalat Dalil Shari. Sometimes discussion is about Tahdid. Tahdid from Had means to define. It's different from Tahdid uh, with Ha, which means to threaten. That tahdid with ha, uh, this is ha, this is from had. That one is from uh, tahdid means threatening, different. 
So, tahdeed dalalat al-dalil al-shari. We want to define the indications of religious resource or evidence. Second, wa ukhra means taratan ukhra. Fi thubut suqraha. We want to say that its instance is there something that this can be applied to. For example, blood is here. Now we can say, okay, according to this hadith, this is najis, for example. Vathalisatan. And another time, the third type of discussion is fi It's about validity of that indication and necessity of taking it, following it. So, you say Zuhur is Hujjah or Khabar Wahid is Hujjah first, which is here the third. What does it now indicate? This is the second task. And third, whether we can apply to this case or not. So, these are three tasks that we have. Walakin, Qabla al Bad Ibhadhil Abhath, Ala Tartib al Mazkur. But before we start with this discussion in the discussions in this order, ala tartib al school means in the order which is mentioned, nasta'arzu ba'd al mabad wal qawaid al amma fil adillat al muhrad. We deal with some of the principles and general rules in adillat al muhrad. So we would have. First, some preparatory discussion. Then we will talk about these three tasks. The first thing that we want to discuss is that whenever you have doubt whether something is hujja or not, if there is any dali, for example, is khabar wahid hujja or not? Is ejma hujja or not? Is zahir al kitab hujja or not? What do you think would be the rational position? If you have doubt about validity of something, it means that you have to ignore it. You cannot follow it unless it is proved that it is hujja. So if you have doubt, means you should assume that it doesn't exist. You carry on with something which already can be applied to that case. For example, can be asalatul hil. Everything is halal unless you know it is haram. There is a hadith which says this is haram, but it is not hujjah. So we leave it. Or there is a hadith which says it is halal, but again it is not hujjah. So we leave it. We go by the principle which is available. Al-asl in the shakk fil Asl here doesn't mean principle. It means what should be our supposition when we have doubt about hujjia. Means the thing that you assume it's there unless it is proved otherwise. Okay. عرفنا أن للشارع دخلا في جعل الحجية للأدلة المحرزة غير القطعية. We discussed this before that شارع the lawmaker has a role له دخل. شارع has a role in giving حجية to those Adelaya Muhrazah, which are not leading to certainty, which are not decisive, like we call them Amarat. Because if you remember, we said Shara can make this Hujjah or say it's not Hujjah. فَإِنْ أَحْرَزْنَا جَعْلَ الشَّارِعَ الْحُجِّيَةَ لِأَمَارَةٍ If we manage to secure, to establish, to prove that Shara has made this Amara Hujjah, فَحُوبَةٍ So you follow it. 
if you can establish, if you can prove, you can demonstrate that Shara has made this Amara a valid way. Okay, Fahuva means, so you follow that. But if you are not sure that Shara has made it Hujja, Lam Yakun Bil Imkan at Amara. It's not possible to rely on that Amara just because it's likely you cannot say i don't know 50 percent maybe shara has made this hujja 50 percent maybe not hujja so i follow it because there is a 50 percent chance of being hujja does any agil follow something which he is not sure it is hujja no, you don't follow anything which is not proved to be hujja. Lam yakun bil imkan at ta'wilu ala tilka al amara. It's not possible to rely. Ta'wil means to rely, to depend. Now, we have uh, in dua. عَلَيْكَ الْمُعَبَّلُ فِي الشِّدَّةِ وَالرَّفَةِ مُعَبَّل Who knows what is مُعَبَّل? According to Saf. عَلَيْكَ الْمُعَبَّلُ فِي الشِّدَّةِ وَالرَّفَةِ So what is this? Is it, what type of مُشْتَاق is this? مُعَبَّل is the one who relies. Mu'avval is what? Mu'avval is ism maf'ul, but also in Sulasi Mazid, Master Mimi comes as ism maf'ul. So Mu'avval means ta'wil. Ta'wil. Doesn't mean as maf'ul. It looks like as maf'ul. Alayka al mu'avvalum is alayka ta'wil. So, as maf'ul also comes as uh, for master mimi. Also, it comes for as zaman, as makan, as alat. All of them in Sulasi Majid come for as maf'ul. The same cast, but means differently. So, لم يكن بالإمكان التعويل means الاعتماد You cannot rely on that sign, that أمارة لمجرد احتمال جعل الشارع خلد Just because there is a likelihood that الشارع might have made this حجة This is not enough for us if you are not sure that Shara has made this hujja, you cannot follow it. Why? Because if it is confirming taklif, why should people stop following al ibaha or bara'a or hilliya and go for this which is likely? If it is denying taklif, again, why should people follow it if they have managed to establish taklif from other ways? Because this amara incarnate nafiyatan let taklif. If this amara denies obligation, وَنُرِيدُ أَنْ نُثْبِتَ بِهَا الْمُعَذْرِيَّةِ And we want to use it to get excuse. This Khabar Wahid, for example, says, you don't have taklif, it's not necessary to do it. Or there is no problem in doing it, it's not haram. So it's removing taklif, either wujub or khurma. So, we say, إن كانت نافية للتكليف ونريد أن نثبت بها المعذرية فمن الواضح 
بناءن علا ما تقدم عدم و امکان ذلك It is clear that based on what we have said before that you cannot do this ما لم نحرز جعل الحجیت لها We cannot negate تکلیف as long as we have not established and proved that this is حجه ما لم نحرز جعل الحجیه لها یعنی اذن الشارع فی ترک التحفظ تجاه التکلیف المشکوک so if you have not established permission of شارع about not doing احتیاط if you have not established that شارع is giving you permission not to do احتیاط about this doubted issue از بدون احراز هاز الازن because without securing this permission تکون منجزیت الاحتمال لتکلیف الواقعی قائمتا به حکم الاف Because if you are not able to establish that Shara has given us permission not to do ihtiyat, means that we have to be careful. Because according to Ayatollah Sa'ad, you remember, he doesn't believe in baraat aqli. He says, aql tells us that you have to be precocious. So, you say, maybe Shara has given us permission. Say, it's not enough. If something is proved to be hujjah and that gives you permission, it's fine. But if it's not proved to be hujjah, you cannot say because there is a chance that maybe Shara has given us permission, we don't need to do ihtiyat. Say no, maybe doesn't work here. Is bedun ihraz hadal is without establishing that you have permission. تکون و منجزیت الاحتمال لتکلیف الواقعی قائمتا به حکم الاغویت او دیس the ability of likelihood of تکلیف to bring تکلیف and activate تکلیف remains according to the judgment of عقل because عقل believes according to آیت الله سهم that as long as there is تکلیف you must do احتیاط He doesn't believe in Qopi Qabila Bayan. You remember he was Maslaku Ta'a, not Maslaku Qopi Liqab. وَلَا تَرْتَفِعُ هَذِهِ الْمُنَجِّزِيَةِ إِلَّا بِإِحْرَازِ الْإِذْنِ فِي تَرْكِ التَّحَفُّوْدِ This would not be removed unless you establish that Shara has given permission not to do احتیاط. ترک و تحفظ می نه تو دو احتیاط نه تو بی پریکوشیز و مع الشک فی الحجیه لا احراز للعزن المزن and if you have doubt it means that you have not established that there is permission okay this is if Amara is telling you that there is no تکلیف you cannot follow it if it is محتمع You may say, okay, what about if Amara says there is taklif? Because you are a person who says that as long as there is ihtimal, we should do ihtiyat. So what if Amara, which is not qat'i, says there is taklif? You say, okay. Even here, this Amara is not useful. Why? Because even without this, we know that just the ihtimal, the probability of having taklif makes us to do ihtiyat, aqlan if we believe in baraat shari is different, Ayatollah Saad believes in baraat shari so practically it doesn't differ from other ulama, practically but theoretically he differs from other ulama at the level of requirement of aql if we didn't have baraat shari it could have led to lots of differences in practice. But now because we have Baraat al-Shari'i, practically doesn't change.
وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْأَمَارَةُ مُثْبِتَةً للتكليف. If Amara is affirming obligation, وَنُرِيدُ أَنْ نُثْبِتَ بِهَا الْمُنَجِّزِيَةِ And we want to use it to make taklif effective. خُرُوجًا أَنْ أَسْلٍ مُعَذِّرْ وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْأَمَارَةُ مُثْبِتَةً للتكليف. وَنُرِيدُ أَنْ نُثْبِتَ بِهَا الْمُنَجِّزِيَةِ خروجاً عن أصل معذر، so that we can go out of the pressure, out of the force of some principle which gives excuse, like أصالة الحل، which is religiously established. So you want to use this amara to run away from أصالة الحل. You remember we had this discussion, Mu'adzir and Munajjiz. Mu'adzir is to give you excuse, means you will have no taklif. Munajjiz means to activate, the one that activates taklif, means you have no excuse. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Even here it is clear that Ma lam naqta' bi hujjiyyataha. As long as we have not become certain about validity of this, we cannot stop practicing Asalatul Hill. Because Asalatul Hill is something which is proved that it is from Shari'ah. How can you say we ignore it? And although it is there, you must do Ihtiyat. You cannot say you must do Ihtiyat. فالدليل الأصل الجاري في الواقع والمؤمن عن التكليف المشكوك هو المرجع ما لم يقطع بحجية الأمارة المثبتة للتكليف. So what is دليل for أصالة الحلية comes here applies to this case as long as we don't have something decisive to say no don't follow asalatul khair if you don't have anything decisive that dalil which proved asalatul khair for example a hadith that said you assume everything is halal unless it is proved to be haram that hadith you cannot ignore it that Dalil for that as means for asalatul hail, which is applicable to this incident, which says that you have aman, you have safety with respect to taklif, which is doubted. That is marja. That is what we have to refer to. As long as there is no certainty that there is valid amara, which confirms or affirms taklif. So, if there is Amara, which is definitely Hujja, which says that you have Taklif, okay, we go by it. But if there is no valid Amara for Taklif, why we should say people not to follow Asalatul Khil? Why you are dismissing that Dalil which proved for us Asalatul Khil? And with this, it becomes right to say, إن الأصل عند الشك في الحجية عدم الحجية. Our primary supposition when we have doubt about validity is that it is not valid. Yeah. What is the natural supposition? If you have doubt about validity or not. You assume there is no validity, there is no hujja. Is it clear or not? بمعنى أن الأصل نفوذ الحالة المفترضة لولا تلك الأمارة. Ask means what was supposed if this amara was not there. We carry on with that. Whether it was before amara. Munajjiz or Mu'adzir. We carry on. And this Amara to stop that has to be decisive. Has to be proved to be Hujjah. Otherwise, we carry on 
as if this didn't exist. Okay? Another issue. This issue is very important. To remind you of something similar, I can refer to what we discussed in Estesab. If you remember, we said in Estesab, ulama would not accept asle musbet. Remember? For example, this water used to be tahir. Now you have doubt whether it has become najis or not. Okay? So you can assume that it is a still tahir. But can you bring factual implications from this that I assume that it's for example weight is still the same the weight of water or I can prove that uh, no dog came to this room because if dog had come had uh, drank from this and made it nudges these are things that maybe if we had knowledge of tahara of water if we could make these you know reasonings and bring all these implications but for kahase istishab is only valid as a practical duty as a vazifi amali we cannot, based on that, bring lots of existential, you know, consequences. So, this is just a reminder. I wanted to remind you of what we had before. Now, here, the question is, how much we can prove, we can establish with Adelaya Muhrazi? Because that was usul amaliyya. Now we want to talk about adalil muhrez. Adalil al muhrez lahu madlul mutabaqiy wa madlul iltizami. Inshallah, you remember in mantiq we said there are three types of talala for alfas. Yeah, we said Dalil is either lafzi or ghayr lafzi, linguistic or not linguistic. Lafzi is either mutabaqi or tazamuni or iltizami. Remember? Mutabaqi means 100%. Like, salam Like when you say water, it corresponds to the meaning of water, that liquid. Tadamuni means it indicates it because it is part of the meaning. For example, when we say I drove the car, it means you drove something which has steel, which has doors, which has tires, which has engines. Yeah. So, although you didn't mention them, but Tadamunan I understand. Or you say, for example, I have studied, for example, Bidayatul Hikmah. So I understand that you must have studied, uh, for example, Tashkikul Wujud. Because it's part of the discussion. In, but sometimes it's Iltizami. It's not Tazam. For example, you say, I have studied in Hose of England. So, I understand by implication that you have done Mubahasa. Mubahasa is not part of the curriculum, but everyone knows that if you study here, you must do Mubahasa. Yes? Otherwise, you have not studied here. So, this is Tadamun. 
sorry, التزامي means by implication. التزام. تزامني is part of it. So, الدليل المحرز له مدلول مطابق if we take it from مطابقة. ومدلول التزامي. Some people say مطابقي, but I think مطابقي is better. Means from مطابقة. Like التزام مصدر مطابقة is مصدر. مدلول مطابقي ومدلول التزام مطابقي means corresponds whole meaning and whole lafs match each other ومدلول التزامي means something by implication فكلما كان الدليل المحرز حجة ثبت بذلك مدلوله المطابقي Whenever dalil is dalil muhrez khudja, the meaning which corresponds to it would be established. For example, if it is said, Salatul Jum'ah is wajib, you realize that you must do Salatul Jum'ah with two khutbah, two rak'ah, everything you have to do it. This is mutabaqi. وَأَمَّا مَدْلُولُهُ الْإِلْتِزَامِ But what would be understood by the way of implication? فَفِيهِ بَحْثٌ Here ulama have some discussion, some kind of disagreement. فِيهِ بَحْثٌ means it's not 100% clear. Yeah, there's a kind of debate here. وحاصله أن الدليل المحرز إذا كان قطعيا they say the result the conclusion of that discussion is this if this دليل المحرز is decisive something which produces يقين they said okay لا شك في ثبوت مدلولاته الالتزامية به there is no doubt that we can also establish everything which is understood by the way of implication because they are also becoming certain. In the same way that the corresponding meaning is established, this meaning by implication also is established. This is when you have yaqeen. Okay? For example, you have yaqeen that this is water. Anything mutabak your iltizami can be established if you have yaqeen. But, إِذَا كَانَتْ دَلِيلُ ذَنِّيَ But if it is not yaqeen, it is ذَنِّي and you have certainty about hujjah but you don't have certainty about the content وَقَدْ ثَبَتَتْ حُجِّيَّتُهُ its validity it's established how? بِجَعْلِ الشَّارِحِ it is different from yaqeen yaqeen is valid by itself but Amara is valid if Shara makes it valid. Shara can tell us Khabar Wahid is Hujja or Shara can tell us Khabar Wahid is not Hujja. It's up to him. وَإِذَا كَانَ الدَّلِيلُ ذَنِّيًّا وَقَدْ ثَبَتَدْ حُجِّيَّتُهُ بِجَعْلِ الشَّارِعِ كَمَا فِي الْأَمَارَةِ If Dalil is Zanni, not Qat'i, and its validity is proved by the authorization of Shari, like Amarat, مثل خبر الثقة, مثل ظهور الكلام, we have two hala, we have two conditions. Pardon? خبر الثقة means the hadith which is narrated by a reliable person. خبر واحد. There are two conditions. Al-hala al-ula. Al-ula means al-hala to al-ula. 
ان يكون موضوع الحجيه اي ما حكم الشارع بانه حجه صادقا على الدلاله الالتزاميه what is made hujjah by شارع is also applicable to this dalalat al-tazami kasidqihi ala dalalat al-mutabaqiyah in the same way that it is applicable it is true about dalil dalalat al-mutabaqi it is also about dalalat al-tazami for example an yarda dalilun ala hujjiyat khabar al-thiqah for example we have an evidence which says the hadith narrated by a reliable person is hujjah and then it is said in al ikhbar bi an yuqalu bi an al ikhbar an shay ikhbarun an lawazim whenever you inform people about something you are also informing about the implications for example if i told, tell you it has rained it also means that you have now for example wet ground floor is wet or you have to take umbrella for example so these are the things that are understood by implication so if we say khabar thiqa is hujjah then whatever thiqa has said has some implications those also also said by thiqa you cannot say to thiqa i don't accept the implication of what you say fa fi hadhihi al hala yathbut al madlul al iltizam la annahu mimma akhbara anhu al thiqa bi dalalat because this is also what thiqa has informed you about thiqa informs you some about certain things by mutabaqa and informs you about certain things by iltizam if you are told to rely to accept thiqa you have to accept everything which is understood from him fa yashmuluhu dalil al hujjah al mutakaffil lil amr bil amal bi kull ma akhbara bihi al thiqa so that evidence which says khabar al thiqa is hujjah everything which is told you which is relate to you by thiqa you have to accept that dalil includes also madlul iltizam second condition as al halat al thaniya an la yakuna mawdu al hujjiyat sadiqan ala dalalat al iltizam it's opposite to the first condition what is the subject matter of validity or authority does not apply does not include dalalat iltizami for example an yarda dalilun ala hujjiyat zuhur al lafz we have dalil that zuhur al alfaz is hujja okay then al ma'na al iltizami is not al ma'na al zahiri it's not zuhur there so here you cannot accept it or you can at least discuss it maybe some people don't accept it this is different from saying whatever sirqa tells you you have to accept because that easily includes what he told you by implication but here we say al ma'na al zahiri hujja so al ma'na al iltizam is not zahir fa inna al dalalat al iltizamiya ghayr al urfiya that dalalat which is by implication which is not urfi urfi uh, i don't know if you remember in uh, logic we said ad dalalatul iltizamiya is sometimes so clear that you can say it is understood from lafz ad dalalatul iltizamiya sometimes it is zaruri and it's so clear that it's as if it is said okay for example
If I say, for example, the, he is my father, maybe by implication, but very clearly means that I respect him. No one can say uh, this is not meant or this does not come to my mind. It means he is someone who is respected by, or he is older than me. Although the meaning of father is not to be older, but it comes by implication and it's very clear. So things like this, which are orphan, means according to the common sense, they are understood immediately, as if they are part of ma'ana, of the lapse. فَإِنَّ الدَّلَالَةَ الْإِلْتِزَامِيَّةَ غَيْرَ الْأُرْفِيَّةَ If it is غير urfi. Laysad zuhuran lafsiya. It's not a linguistic uh, apparent or outward meaning. Fala to shakilu fardan men modu dalil al hutya. So they don't form, they don't constitute an instance for the subject of dalil al hutya. And here then a new discussion or debate starts. فَمِنْ هُنَا يَقَعُ الْبَحْثِ فِي حُجِّيَّةِ الدَّلِيلِ لِإِثْبَاطِ الْمَدْلُولِ الْإِلْتِزَامِ فِي حَالَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا الْقَبِيلِ Here is, there is a discussion about validity of that evidence, that reference for proving Madlule el tezami in such circumstances when it is not orphan understood as something which is attached and something which cannot be separated. La anna dalila hujiya te zuhur la yusbetul hujiya illa le zuhur al lafs. Whatever is the dalil for validity of zuhur al ma'na zahiri. Cannot prove except hujjia for zuhur. But this is not zuhur, this is iltizam. Waddalalatul iltizamiya lahaza zuhur, laysa zuhur al lafsiya. Fala takunu hujjatan. If you say what difference it makes, because we know that this is a real implication of that meaning. Between these two meanings, there is implication. We say, okay. It is true that between these two, there is some implication. But because in the case of Amara, Hujjia is given by Share, Share can decide to give Hujjia in the first level and whatever comes out of it like implication or Shara can say I only give Hujia to the first level so some ulama have said both levels can be understood some ulama have said only at the first level we stop we don't have Dalil to go further why because Hujia is not real here Hujia is granted by Shara and Shara can decide to what extent he wants to grant Hujia to this. Okay? It's clear? <laughs> yeah. So, if it is for Ma'na Zahiri, Shara can say, I only accept this to be Hujjah, not to go to another level and say what is implied by this is also Hujjah. No. No. لَأَنَّ الْحُجِّيَّ حُكْمٌ شَرْعِيٌّ Sorry, I think I missed one line. Uh, مجرد علمنا من الخارج بأن ظهور اللف إذا كان صادقا فدلالته الالتزامية صادقة أيضا لا يبرر استفادة الحجية للدلالة الالتزامية 
just the fact that we know from outside that if what is understood is correct it implies that in reality that is not enough for when the hujjah is proved by shara yes if this was really water or this was really tahir we could make some uh, implications out of it but if you are establishing that this is tahir from shara so shara can say i give you only permission to carry on to this extent okay for example if shara says khabar wahid is hujja he can say khabar wahid is hujja for only 10 years he can say khabar wahid is hujja forever because he is granting hujja it he can decide to what extent he wants to give hujja to this okay you cannot take it from shara and then forget it and build lots of things on it okay لان الحجيه حكم شرعي because hujja is hukm shar'i so that would not justify understanding hujja from dalalat al-iltizami because hujja is religious ruling wa qad yukhassisuhu an shara can make it exclusive to one dalala not the other one means to mutabaqi not iltizami although these two in truth maybe they are related to each other but this is not the real truth this is supposed truth this is a practical truth we cannot establish the truth with this yeah this is practically taking the place of truth okay now there are two questions or two opinions here maybe shall we continue or you want to after, after the... okay so because this takes good 40 minutes oh, okay. so yeah so maybe at least one of them i can say one of them so that you grasp it and get ready for this يوجد في هذا المجال اتجاه. There are two opinions here. So please remember, what is the question? The question is, when Shar has given hujjah to something, but it is not a kind of necessary implication of that in the mind of public in the mind of common sense ahaduhuma lil mashhur one opinion one attitude ittijah means attitude is for mashhur for the majority or a good number of ulama yeah? it's very popular mashhur means uh, it is popular among ulama wa huwa an dalil al hujjah kullama istufida minhu ja'alu al hujjah li shay'in bi wasfihi amaratan ala al hukm al shar'i kana zalika kafiyan li isbat al lawazimihi wa madlulatihi al iltizamiyya according to the view of mashhur the dalil for hujjah for example the dalil which says khabar wahid is hujjah the dalil which says zahir is hujjah whenever it is understood from it that hujjah is granted or is authorized for something because it is amara it's a sign it is enough to establish all the implications and all the concepts which by the way of implication are understood and based on this 
they have made this rule which says وَذَعُوا قَاعِدَةً مُؤَدَّاهَا means they have made a rule whose meaning is this أَنَّ مُثْبَتَاتِ الْأَمَارَاتِ حُجَّةً unlike usul amaliyya for usul amaliyya their musbatat are not hujjah means what you understand by implication is not hujjah for usul amaliyya but they say for amarat musbatat are hujjah what does it mean ay anna al amarah kama yu'tabaru isbatuha limadlulaha al mutabiq limadlulaha al mutabiq hujjatan kadhalika isbatuha limadlulaha al iltizami in the case of Amarat, in the way that their indication, their establishing of corresponding meaning is valid, also their establishing of the meaning by implication is also valid. So, majority of ulama say this. They say you have to distinguish because Amare, although it is zanni, but it is informing about reality. Because, you know, this is for Hukm Waqi. They want to inform us about reality. So we go by it as much as it can take us. Unlike Asla Amali, which they say it doesn't prove by implication. But the second opinion, Wal ittijahul akhar lisayyid al ustaz the second opinion is for Ayatollah Khoui, because Ayatollah Khoui was the teacher of Shahid Sadr. So the other opinion is for Ayatollah Khoui, Rahmatullah Alai, Haythu Zahaba ila anna mujarrad qiyam dalilan ala hujjiyat amaratin ala asas ma laha min kashfin an al hukm al-shari la yakfi lizalik. Basically opposite to the previous one. He was saying that just because there is dalil, there is evidence that this Amara is valid because it is discovering, it's helping us to understand Hukm Shari, this is not enough. Why? Is min al mumkin subutan because it is possible that in reality Shara says only take madlule mutabiqi. Don't take madlule el tezami. Is min al mumkin subutan because it's possible in reality. An nashare yata'abadul mukallaf means ask mukallaf to be obedient only with respect to madlul mutabaki for amara or kama yumkinu an yata'abadu be kull ma takshifu anhu mutabakatan abil tazaman. Shara can decide. He says only go as far as ma'anay mutabaki goes or go by it even to the Things that can be understood by implication. And as long as both are possible in reality, because both are possible so what should you do if you think that I have to decide whether Shara has made it this much hujja or has made it this much hujja what is the result you only accept the minimum yeah Either Shara has made Madlul Mutabiqi and Iltizami both Hujjah or just for Madlul Mutabiqi. The result is you keep to the list. Pardon? I give you an example. Like, for example, I tell you khabar wahid is for example hujja i can then tell you to what extent okay 
or I say Zahir al is Hujjah, but only as far as it is uh, expressed linguistically. But what you can understand by applying logical rules, no. Yeah, so it's possible for the one who gives validity to decide for you to what extent you go by it. You are welcome. So, if you want, according to Ayatollah Khui, if you want to say that even Madlulat al Tazami are understood and are accepted, you should be able to say that there is Etlaqun fi Dalil al there is a kind of generality or a kind of uh, unlimitedness that includes such cases. Yeah? Min wujud etlaqin fi dalil al A kind of openness, expansion that yaqtadi imtidad al ta'abud vassarayani, which requires that this is coming to include Madalil al-Tazami. It can embrace Madalil al-Tazami and can be extended to Madalil al-Tazami. Madalil al-Tazami, Madalil is the plural for Madlul, means meaning, meanings which are understood by implication. Okay, so there are two views. One is for Mashhur, one is for minority like Ayatollah Khoui Vassahihuhu wal attajawal awal but he says the first is right inshallah we can discuss this later wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin